There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, <clears throat> for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I was wrought with my people, I have polluted mine inheritance, and given them into thine hand. Uh, thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou verily, uh, hast thou uh, uh, very heavily laid thy yoke. Most high God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence here already. And we thank you for your people. And now, God, we pray that you would visit us with revelation, with illumination, with an epiphany, God, of what's going on in the earth and in the heavens. And we pray that you would continue to have us at a spiritual cutting edge of the church, Father God, that you would show us what was and what is and what is to come. Open our eyes and show us marvelous things in your word. We pray that the spirit of prophecy be loosed in this place. We pray that your people, God, would, hallelujah, would just, hallelujah, be blessed in this place. And we just pray, according to your promise, that as we diligently seek you, that you would reward us, O King, with knowledge, with wisdom, with healing, with blessings, God. Reward your people for being here tonight. They could be anywhere. Reward them for being here tonight, God, with the very secret prayers of their hearts. And we just thank you for it, God. Put a hedge of protection around this place, a wall of fire, a legion of your holy angels, God. Put the enemy on notice that we are here tonight, God, and that we are not only here, but that you are here in Dallas. Shake this place. Let a sound go out from this place in the spiritual, God, and let it go north, let it go south, let it go east, and let it go west, God. Ring out, Father God. Let the aroma of Christ rise from this place, God. You say wherever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered, Father God. So call for the eagles. Gather the eagles. Gather in this place, God, till we be sitting two to a chair, Father God, till we get out of this place because we so packed up, God. Do what you have to do, God. You said if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto yourself. Now we take you at your word, Daddy, as we lift you up, God. And we pray all these things in Yahshua Hamashiach's name. In Jesus' name we pray and the church say amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody said in the spirit, I'm going to bring my own chair. I ain't going to be sitting to the chair with somebody. That's somebody. <laughs> hallelujah. All right, y'all. So we're in Isaiah 47 tonight. And if you remember, we've been talking about Babylon, and we've been talking about it for a few chapters now. We went in about Cyrus and how he would destroy Babylon. And last chapter, we looked at Bel and Nebo and the idols, huh? how they were bent over and stooped over and in carts, and they were trying to get away. But Cyrus captured them as well because those people carried their gods, but our God carried us. Amen. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And so chapter 47 is a continuation of talking about Babylon. If I had to put a title on this message, it would be called the judgment of Babylon. The judgment of Babylon. Because God is going to even make to us, uh, uh, he's going to make it clearer. He's going to get more specific about what type of judgment he's going to pour out on Babylon. All right. And so it's important for us as we talk about ancient Babylon to understand that Babylon is one of the cities that we have been, uh, uh, we've termed one of the eternal cities, all right? There are certain cities in our book that's called eternal cities. And it don't really mean that the city lasts forever, but the spirit behind the city will last forever. Anybody hear me up in here? So 
Hallelujah. So we can read about Babel in Genesis, Babylon in the book of Daniel, and then we get, Brother Kelsey, way to the book of Revelation, and Babylon is still there. Still there. And what it is is the spirit of Babylon. And can I tell you that the spirit of Babylon is still here while we're sitting in here. December 2022, Babylon is still out there. So as we talk about Babylon, ancient Babylon, and the judgment of ancient Babylon, I want us to draw some parallels between how God judged ancient Babylon back then and what he's going to do to judge Babylon today, present Babylon, all right, in the end. And so everything that we say about them back then is going to apply to the Babylon today, all right? Now, let me be clear. The Babylon today, like I said, is not one geopolitical location. It's not one place. Babylon doesn't spread now. All right? It doesn't spread now. It's not a country. It's a system. Woo! <laughs> it's a system. It's a system. It don't have one capital. It's many capitals that represent Babylon on this earth. And the different capitals just represent different manifestations and different facets, different talents and strengths of the entire Babylonian system. They say that America represents the military might of Babylon. England and, and Great Britain represents the governmental might, the financial might, the Bank of England of Babylon. Rome represents the religious might of Babylon. Anybody hearing me up in here? All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, 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 and they, some even say that you'll find the great obelisk in those great Babylonian capitals. Huh? That's why you go to D.C. in America and they got one of the biggest obelisks in the world. That, that uh, hallelujah, in the capital there, that Washington Monument. I think that's what it's called. Huh? Be standing there looking at that thing. That's an Egyptian obelisk representing false gods and the worship of false deity. But you go to England, that same obelisk is there. You go to Rome, St. Peter's Square, and that obelisk is there. All right? And it's like they're sending signals and telling you that this is just another capital of Babylon. And so as we talk about the judgment of Babylon, just draw some parallels. Because what he did back then, he's about to do again today. And just because, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory. And just because they're bigger today, it's more spread out. Just because they're stronger today, God's hand is not short. It's not short. He can get them in England, Babylon, Iran, Iraq. It don't matter where it is. We can't hide from his hand. And so we'll be talking about uh, uh, those things. In chapter 47, it's, it's a deep chapter. And I'm going to do my best to organize it. If it get a little unorganized, just pray for me because God talks about in this chapter, he talks about the judgment, huh? him pouring out the judgment, and then he talks about the reason judgment is coming, the reasons that uh, 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 why judgment is coming to Babylon, and once again, those same reasons apply to what's going on today. So listen, without further ado, let's begin with our first point, the first judgment of Babylon spoken of in chapter 47 is that power will be broken. Babylon's power will be broken, all right? The power's going to be broken. And in biblical imagery, what that means is a lot of the times when we talk about a nation, a state, when the power is broken, God will show a picture of a ram, huh? And, or, or some type of deer with, with antlers, some type of buck. And the antlers and the horns always represent authority. Well, in the prophetic, in the vision, in the dream realm, realm, when God is ready to break the power of a nation, he will show through visions and dreams the horns of that ram, the, 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 the antlers of that book broken to show that power will be broken. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. All right? All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Babylon's power, ancient and present, is going to be broken. And so to illustrate that, he, he, he speaks it in great prophetic, beautiful language in verse 1, talking to Babylon, come down. You see the language? You was up, but you're coming down. 
and sit in the dust. You were standing, but you're going to sit. Well, my grandma used to tell us that in French all the time in Louisiana. She would say, assis-toi. Can y'all say, assis-toi? Assis yeah, yeah, it means sit down. Uh, and if you wouldn't sit down, then she would say some other stuff in French. All right? Hallelujah. So, she, so, so, so God is telling Babylon, assis-toi. Come down and sit. Sit where? In the palace? In the dust. Oh, virgin daughter of Babylon, the impenetrable city that no army could get in. The one that, hallelujah, they thought an army would never invade and come upon their land. Kind of sound like America, huh? Whose oceans are her walls. Oh, my God. Huh? The virgin daughter of Babylon, he's telling her, sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. By the time we go to verse 5, which is, a, which is a, a corroboration of verse 1, it says, Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the lady. I just picture the Statue of Liberty. Thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Huh? Hallelujah. And so... So God is speaking to Babylon. He's saying, listen, I'm going to take your empire status away. I'm going to take your superpower status away from you. Uh, there's a word that's used amongst political scientists, the, the hegemony of America, the, the superpower status of America, because America stands as the only superpower. And Babylon was the same way, standing strong, stronger than everything around it. And God is saying, no, nah, no, nah, come down. Sit in the dust. Sit on the ground. There will be no throne. Your power is taken from you. And what ancient Babylon didn't recognize is what was spoken in Daniel chapter 4 by the watchers, by the angels. But the angels watch the affairs of men, and they understand. In Daniel 4 and 17, the watchers said it like this. Come on, we're going to get it up for you. Daniel 4, 17, uh, this is the matter uh, by the decree of the watchers. Huh? Uh, and the Bible says, and, the, and the, the man, by the word of the holy ones, um, um, keep on going to the, to the intent that the living may know. Here it is, that the most high ruleth in the kingdoms of men. Men don't rule in the kingdoms of men. The most high ruleth in the kingdoms of men. And he give it to the kingdoms. He give the kingdoms to whosoever he will. And set it up over it, the basis of men. So they think they all that, but God rules in the kingdoms of men. You see, uh, Psalm 62, 11 says, power don't belong to men. Power belongs unto God. Romans 13 corroborates that, and it says that all power, huh? Uh, uh, it, it tells us, you know it, it says that, that the powers that be are what? Are ordained by God. So every nation, every superpower, every world power, God sat on his throne and said, I'm going to give you power. The only thing about God giving power is like Job say, God give, but he also take away. Come on, give God some glory up in here. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So ancient Babylon forgot who gave them the power. They forgot. And because of that, God's going to take it away. That's the first judgment. He's going to take power away. As we draw this to the present day, Brother Andre, the current nations, the current world system that we call Babylon, with their financial systems, with their markets, with their military might, with their Apache helicopters, with their, with their Sherman tanks, with their A-10 warthogs, with their F-16 fighting eagles and fighting falcons. They, they got every kind of a weapon imaginable. With their nuclear weapons, they think they're unbeatable. But power belongs to God. Yeah. Woo! 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 And whenever God is ready to switch things up, God gave the power, but God is about to take it back. Just like Babylon's power was broken during the days of Cyrus, the current day's power of Babylon will be broken and taken as well. There will be a new world order, 
And it's not a world order like they think. It's a world order that's going to include the Hebrews and the people who love the people of God. That's what it's going to be, Coach Mac. That's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. And it's happening already because they're losing their grip on things. The control is not there. If the control was there like it was, we wouldn't even be talking about what we're talking about in here tonight. All right? Because the information is out, is evidence, proof, proof positive that the grip is loosening. The people are awakening, and our God is returning. Come on, give y'all some praise. Woo! All right. <laughs> My God. And so the first judgment, Babylon's power will be broken. Second judgment. Luxury and ease shall be taken away. Luxury and ease shall be taken away. Because it's one thing to have power. But let me tell you, Babylon enjoys its luxuries, baby. Ooh, yes it does, man. Air condition. Ooh, running water. Ooh, and we're going to be all right. Don't worry about that. We're talking about Babylon. Don't you know that when God pour out judgment on Egypt, he's always willing and able to protect Goshen? He can turn all the lights off in Egypt, but keep the lights on in Goshen. <laughs> Come on, give God some praise. Amen. So, so we ain't got to worry about a thing. God is not evil and unjust. He knows how to keep the righteous. Huh? Uh, 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 up against the day of retribution and redemption. And so, so God can protect us during those days of tribulation. But for Babylon, looking at Isaiah 47, 1 again, look where it comes from. It says at the B part of 1, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. When he talks about these words, tender and delicate, the new translations uh, uh, interpret this for ease and luxury. And so Isaiah is saying that Babylon, because of all his power and all of his money, lived in ease, in luxury, in pleasure. Their hands did not get dirty. Other nations did the dirty work for them. I got a brother that, that he, he owns a flooring company. He do some hard work. Brother Isaac, he probably going to be watching this on the app. But he come by me all the time, and he say, Pastor, he say, let me hear your hands. I say, hear my hands? What you mean? He say, rub them together. Because when you're working, man, your hands make noise when you rub them together. You got calluses. Your hands rub together like sandpaper. So I rub my hands together. He say, I can't hear nothing, Pastor. He say, I can't hear nothing, Pastor. And he come down, and he say, show me your hands. So I show him my hands. And he look at my hands. He say, cocoa butter. That's what he said. <laughs> He said, Coco, but man, burn me up, man. He said, you a pencil pusher, pastor. You flip paper clips. That's all you do. And so he rubbed his hands, and his hands go, whoosh, 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 whoosh. You know what I'm saying? And he just show off when he see me. He come there rubbing his hand. All right? And so that's just an illustration about Babylon. Babylon lived in ease and luxury. Other people did the hard work. They didn't have no calluses on their hands, y'all. All right? But all of that was about, is about to be over. God is saying you will no longer be called tender and delicate. He moves on to verse 2, and he tells them, he says, listen, instead of the ease and the delicacy, take the millstone." And grind meal. All right? Now, this is interesting, y'all, because a millstone is a huge, huge stone. We read about it in the New Testament when the Lord talks about those that come against his people. He said, it was better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and throw it into the sea. And that millstone was usually huge, y'all. And I got a picture of it so that we can show you. A sound booth might be able to get that for you. That's a millstone. And what they would do, uh, uh, e Melody, they would take two millstones and they would put grain in the center of it. The millstone, the bottom of it, there's another pick sound booth. The bottom of the millstone, uh, there's another pick. Uh, uh, the bot, there it is. The bottom of the millstone had grooves in it. They would etch out grooves. And so they would put the grain in the middle, and somebody would get on a big handle and turn this thing. And I'm talking about one type, and I'm going to show you the other type. Two big flat stones. 
the grain in the middle. As they would turn it, the grain would like flow into the grooves. And as it would turn, it would grind the grain into flour so they could make bread. But could you imagine how heavy that was to push that stone? That stone ain't on ice. That stone is on another stone. And so that stone, they, they pushing that stone. They pushing that stone. And that was the biblical kind that was found in, found in Israel and in Syria, the two flat stones. Uh, if y'all could go back to the other slide, this is another type of millstone. They sat it upright over another stone. But once again, the same concept. Somebody had to push that big stone. Y'all ever tried to pick up a boulder or a stone? I'm not talking about that fake stuff, that real stuff. And look, it could be that big, and you're like, oh, oh. you know, your kid like, come on, Dad, put your back into it. <laughs> We're like, baby, stones are heavy. This type of work was reserved, y'all, most of the time for animals, oxen. Secondarily, prisoners. You could remember a man of God that got caught up, got his locks cut off, lost his strength. They put out his eyes. Anybody know his name? Samson, Samson one, one caught by the Philistines. They put him in that prison, put up the verse in Judges 16, 21. They put, up, they put out his eyes, and they had him grinding in that prison house. What was he doing? He was grinding the grain. Hallelujah. And, but the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, and, and, and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, huh? And he did grind grain in the prison house. This ain't no work for people that's way up. It's not even work for regular servants or slaves. It's the work of animals. It's the work of prisoners. It's the work of the lowest slave. Bring it back to our text. Oh, Babylon, you live tender and delicately. You didn't, you didn't work hard. They carried you in carriages. You wore royal robes. You was balling. Huh? You, you was going to ball forever, Babylon. Huh? Other people did the hard work for you. But listen, you went from not rags to riches, but riches to rags. Woo! Oh, how the mighty have fallen. All right? And God is saying Babylon is going to fall from that high status all the way to doing menial tasks. Labors that the low folk do, that would happen to ancient Babylon, all right? To ancient Babylon. Now, let's bring that to the present-day Babylon. You know, as I look at present Babylon, I see the judgment of God coming. And you got to watch the way God worked. You know, God has a way of working. It's, it's, Kelsey, it's like, a, it's like a nice fade, you know? You see, you see, back then, we, we, we would do a, a high-top fade. that It would go bald and dark with hair. But they got a new thing they do with them adjustable clippers. They blend that thing. And you see Kelsey on that, they working that clipper, they blending that thing. And the fade is a slow fade. You could barely tell when the hair is bald and it kind of fade in touch. That's the way God works. You say, Pastor, how you know? Because that's the way the sun rises and the sun set. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? <laughs> the sun just don't pop up. Boom, you know what I'm saying? It's like noon, night to noon. No, no. It's a sunrise. It's a dawn and it's a gradual thing and it's a beautiful thing to behold as light is coming up on the horizon. And it's just as beautiful as light is setting on the horizon. Can I tell you that judgment is rising on the horizon? And, and as we talk about the luxury and ease being taken away from Babylon, as we look at the present Babylonian system, I look around and I see the elite, y'all, of America and even Europe, the privileged. huh? I look around and I see people that, 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 that used to never do certain things. I see them doing those things now. Anybody hear me up in here? You see, you see, we got, we got brothers that, that own businesses now, 
and they own uh, lawn services. They own they own uh, house washing businesses. They own hallelujah uh, uh, moving companies. They own uh, uh, um, uh, house cleaning businesses, and and they were used to certain ethnicities coming for jobs. And now we're seeing other ethnicities coming in, looking for that kind of work. I ain't never seen them people clean houses. I ain't never seen them people wash cars. I ain't never saw them people cut grass. They don't even look right in the flower bed, but I still let them come in my flower bed. Come on up in there. You forgot something. You missed something. Come on. (laughs) You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? There's a switch that's happening. The luxury and ease of Babylon is being taken. And it's not just being taken, but those that know their Bible is being taken off of some and being placed upon another. Hey, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. They go into our jobs and we go into their jobs. Listen, some of y'all got positions that your parents and grandparents would, wouldn't even dream of having. Some of y'all living in neighborhoods that your parents and grandparents couldn't even go in. I'm telling you, man, your grandparent coming to where you live and saying, man, let me tell you, this is a mansion. Huh? And this is just your stop to your next stop because you got greater that's coming. You, woo, woo, in the name of Jesus. There's a switch that's happening. Switch that's happening. The people of God are going places. Listen, listen, I think that the Jeffersons was prophesying because we moving on up. Woo! We finally got a piece of the pie. I don't know the rest of the song, but I was singing now. Woo! My goodness. So it's a, it's a switch in the luxury and ease of Babylon is being sapped away. Oh, how the mighty has fallen. And you see them in the streets now. In the streets. You see them moving in the hood now. We passing by the hood and them folks sitting out on the porch like us. You be like, man, lock your door. Wait up. You know, you see them sleeping outside. You see them panhandling. And it's only going to continue all the way to the very top. I have in my notes, their greatest generations is past. Our greatest generations are yet to come. (laughs) 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 Babylon is falling. And you worry about them children. Don't worry about them children. (laughs) Them children going to be greater. Them children are going to be greater. They're going to be wiser. They're going to be stronger. They're going to be more prosperous because the, the first pouring is already happening on us. Woo! Woo! My God, my God, my God. Pastor, how can you say that? How can you say that? That's biblical principles. The wealth of the wicked has always been stored up for the righteous. And the wicked Babylonian system with his finances, military might, his sinful ways, it's got to come down. The wages of sin is death, y'all. There's a curse on it. So as it crumbles, the wealth of it is going to be moved over. The greatest transfer of wealth in history, all the jobs, all the property, all the coaching positions. Hey, come on, somebody. All the stores. All the franchises, it just, you, you just got to wait a while. Just, just wait a while. <laughs> and you done been looked over so long, you're going to be the only one left. <laughs> well, come on in. <laughs> you're the only one left. The luxury and ease of Babylon will be taken away. Come on, pal. I done got too excited on this. I got to keep moving. The third judgment on Babylon. They shall be treated as slaves and captives. They shall be treated as slaves and captives. And this is hard for us, but I got to preach it. It's Bible. It's Bible. It really is. You got to watch what you do to people. Because what you do to people oftentimes come right back on you. We reap what we sow. Huh? Huh? 
And so what we see in verses 2 and 3 of this particular text in Isaiah, this strange language when he says, uncover thy locks, which is interesting because it, 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 it begs the question that Babylon might have been of a darker complexion too. But that ain't my business. I'm only concerned with the Hebrews. You understand what I'm saying? You were for this present time. But I always wonder why ISIS was in the Middle East destroying artifacts more than they was trying to take property. They was up in there trying, they were destroying, you know what I'm saying, historical artifacts, man. I wonder if the artifacts had wide noses like us and locks like us. What, what y'all doing destroying all of that? You ISIS. You're supposed to be spreading your religion, not destroying ours. What in the world are you doing? Anyway, I digress. I digress. This, this, the, 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 the Babylonians, look what he says. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Pastor, what does this mean? You see, when people on the run from danger, from an invading army, you know, there's no longer time for, to be carried by your servants. And, and, you know, these people in Babylon trying to get out of there. And they wealthy and they used to walk in slow. But God is saying, no, you're going to you're gonna have to let your head on. <laughs> and you're going to have to pull your dress up to get away from these, the, 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 this Persian army that's coming. There ain't going to be no time to look for a bridge to cross, cross a river. You're going to have to pull your dress up, show your thigh, and cross that river like that. Oh, yeah. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Because an army is coming. God is telling Babylon. He say, not only that, he says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. All right? And a lot of times when uh, uh, people trying to get away and they captured and they taken prisoner, they usually don't allow prisoners to wear they, the clothing that they, that they was in. Right. You know, you don't see people in Angola with Louis Vuitton on. They ain't out there. With Gucci belts. No, when they take you prisoner, they give you clothing. And back in those days, the biblical days, when they gave you clothing, they, they made sure it wasn't clothing that would give you any type of hope or inspiration. It was rags. It was tatters. It was, it was barely enough to cover your body. God is telling Babylon, listen, you're about to be treated like captives, like slaves. It's about to get rough, Babylon, you know? Because Cyrus is coming, the Persians is coming, and listen, you won't be wearing all of this expensive stuff no more. You're going to be wearing rags. That's barely going to cover your body. And it's going to be embarrassing for them. They will become captives and slaves. Now, in the modern Babylonian system and struggle, the present rulers, the privileged, the elite, the most high of the elite, will be regulated to slave status and captives. And I know it's hard to see, and we don't even say their name in public, but the Ashkenazi heads called the Rothschilds and all of their families that run the world, all the trillionaires, God is going to deal with them. He's going to deal with them. He's going to deal with them, and they're going to have to pull their skirts up and run. They're going to have to wear their hat, and they're going to have to get rid of all the expensive stuff. They're going to be relegated to orange. County Blues. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Anybody hear what I'm talking about? And I know y'all can't see it. But countries done tried it before. They done put out warrants for arrest because they know who really doing the wickedness. And, and this is deep uh, uh, international stuff we talking about here. All right? Because they got a lot of wickedness. They're going to be relegated to captives and slaves all the way to the top. All right? And we just read yesterday at Philadelphia that the year of recompense huh, would come. And in Joel 2 and 8, they showed us that the very people that put us in slavery uh, would most probably end up in slavery themselves. Hallelujah. And that's hard to hear for some of us. We're so good Christians. we just like, oh, God. But it's part of what's called justice. All right. And it's part of God's justice. All right. And I'm not going to go too deep into it. Let some of y'all cry. Now, some of y'all got them got them hearts like a lion. Y'all like, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of y'all like I got some concrete that need to be worn. Some of y'all. Woo. Wow. God. And so that's the way that's the way the Bible speaks of it. Now, before we go with the minutes I have left. All right. We're going to go back into 47 and we're going to just talk about what Isaiah is saying. 
Isaiah says in 47, 3, the B part of 3, he tells us huh, some things about who is, who is uh, going to execute this justice upon uh, ancient and modern Babylon. All right? Um, God says in 3B, I will take vengeance. I will not meet thee as a man. And this is, this is, this is some, woo, some bad language right here. God is, God is getting, he getting, he getting bucked, man. <laughs> Cause he telling them, y'all don't have to worry about all these other people y'all over, but, but it won't be them that do it to y'all. He said, I will take vengeance on Babylon. And he says, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't got all these weapons, all these systems to defend against men. But God say, I'm not going to meet you like a man. And so weapons ain't going to be able to do nothing against God. Anybody hear me up in here? Helicopters and tanks and all that. No, you, when God fight against somebody, you can't win. All right, you can't win. He destroyed Egypt with frogs and flies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Frogs and flies. What are you going to do to America, huh? Raccoons and birds? Listen, he don't, he don't need all kind of stuff. He's sovereign. All right? He make it not rain on America for two years. And, or he make it rain too much for two years. <laughs> you know? I read an old sermon by Charles Spurgeon talking about the omnipotent, that's one of those big words, huh? omnipotent power of God. And, and Spurgeon said, consider before you fight. Because everything is at his disposal. Everything is a weapon to God. Even the very air you breathe in right now. You understand what I'm saying? He removed one chemical component out of that oxygen and you Make it too pure or not pure enough. And <laughs> he mess around. Look, look, look. Take the bees out of the cycle, life cycle. Of no pollination. And he say, I'm not going to meet you like a man. <laughs> I'm not going to meet you like a man. All right? He goes into it. Let's come on. We got a little more time left. In verse 6. He says, hallelujah. He says, verse 6 right here, he's going to tell us the whole story. And I love this. All right? And this applies, I'm, I'm going to apply this to modern Babylon right now. It applies to ancient Babylon too. See, them countries get excited when they put us in slavery. They think they overcame us. They think they captured us. They think that they were stronger than us. That they defeated us. They did not defeat us. We defeated ourselves. We turned on our God. How you defeat a people whose God is the living God? <laughs> when they write with God, Timothy, how you defeat a people when they write with God? Our Bible shows us three, four, five armies coming at us at once in, in Bible days. Huh? Our, our Bible show us where we didn't have, sometimes you didn't have to pick up a finger, but angels from heaven come down, slay 185,000 in one night. How you defeat a people whose God is the Lord? You can't. Baal taught us that. Uh, Balaam taught us that. There's no way you could curse them when God done blessed them. No way you could beat them. You would have to beat him to beat them. They can only beat themselves. And so he sets them straight in verse 6 and he says, listen, don't get the big head, Babylon, like you somehow done defeated my people. No, understand yourself and understand what happened. I was wroth with them, he says in verse 6. I was angry with them. Sambu, put that up for me in verse 6, 47, 6. He says, I was angry with them, with my people. Therefore, I have polluted my own inheritance. I allowed them to be defeated. All right? I allowed their land to be polluted and, 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 and just messed up. No, you ain't did that. I did that. All right? And given them into thy hand. You see it there? You see the language? 
Because if he would have never gave us into their hand, they would never have us. <laughs> Come on, Bartle. Come on, you. Yeah, but I, you already know. You already know. You don't see them LeBrons and them. Baby, you can't take that. You can't take that. Stand up, Andre. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You, listen, man. You can't take that. How you take that? How you take that? And then you talk, tap on top of that, you know, the education we had, the literacy we had, the cutting edge uh, 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 weapons of war and engineering we had in the biblical days, man. The boss was doing that. Our people were doing that. Superpower, world power. God said, nah, 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 get it straight, get it straight. Babylon, y'all ain't defeat them. I gave them into y'all. Because of what they did to me. All right. Let's go back to y'all. Y'all y'all understanding this? Is it all right? Is all right? Nobody getting sleepy up in here, huh? All right. He say, he say, and giving them into the hands. All right. But y'all messed up. Babylon, you messed up. You messed up, Babylon. Yeah, I gave them into your hands, but you messed up. Ba what did Babylon do? Thou did it show them no mercy. God, one of them people, you know them people that they fight with their own family? But you better not mess with their family. <laughs> come on, some of y'all come from families like that. Man, you and your sister be up in there, look. Somebody come up in there and try to, try to hit your sister? You forget about everything bad she done did. Oh, no, that's my sister. Oh, you ain't going to hit my sister. You was just fighting your sister. But you ain't going to fight my sister. That's how God is to Israel. That's how God is to Israel. Yeah, I know I'm judging them, and I know that I gave them up, but you better still watch how you treat them. You better, you better still watch how you... You better still... You better, you, I'm watching, y'all. And God says, I watched the way Babylon has treated my people. I have discerned that y'all have showed them no mercy. And you see, God is just. If he going to judge us for our sins as a nation, you don't think he going to judge the other nations for their sins? My God, my God, my God. He said, Babylon, you showed them no mercy. All right? You showed them no mercy. You can capture my people, even put them in slavery, make them work for you, make them plant it because you can't plant it, build it because you can't build it, but don't be cruel to them. That's a whole different ball game, all right? And in ancient Babylon, they were cruel to us. In Lamentations 4 and 16, they were cruel to us, all right? And this is understandable because anytime you in a you a stranger in a land that's not your own, you're gonna be treated harshly. That's why they treat our brothers and sisters harshly. That's trying to come across that 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 uh that border. All right, all right. They treat them like strangers. They're being harsh to them. They don't put the Norwegians in in camps and separate their families and. And they give them little reflector blankets that look cool, but that's cheap. They don't give, they don't give, they don't give the, the, the Europeans that, you see? But the Latinos that come over, you know? Being cruel to God's people. But God sees that. Well, in Babylon, Lamentations um, 4 and, and 16, y'all know I can't see too good. The Bible says the anger of the Lord had divided them. He will no more, let's keep going, Regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests. They favored not the elders. So in Babylon, they, were, they didn't care if they were men or women of God. They didn't care if they were old. They were just doing people wrong in Babylon. In, in Lamentations 5 and 12, our people in Babylon, this is Jeremiah writing this, he said, princes are hanged by their hands. They, they was hanging us even back then. The faces of elders were not honored. And so they didn't care not only if you was a man or a woman of God. They didn't care if you was a prince or, or royalty. Huh? Strangers don't care about our royal blood. 
<laughs> and they was hanging the princess <laughs> by the hands, and they, they, they didn't care about the, the, the orary head, the gray hair. That didn't matter. And so God was telling ancient Babylon, because you was like that with my people, huh? that's the reason I'm a judge you. Let's bring that to present Babylon. Have they been cruel to God's people all these years we've been here? These 400 years. Can you think about a little cruelty that God might have seen looking down from heaven? Huh? Well, I can. Soon as we got off the boat, <laughs> cruelty hit us in the face. Slavery, huh? And not just any slavery, but American slavery. That whipping slavery. That abusive slavery. That raping slavery. That slavery that didn't let you read. What you think the Most High would look down and see? He said, that's cruel. Not just slavery. When he forced them to release us. Jim Crow came. Lynching came. Terrorism and intimidation by the Ku Klux Klan. That's cruel. All right? And when the, the lynching, one or two of us, wasn't enough, they went into our whole cities. I'm talking about Greenwood. I'm talking about Rosewood. Black Wall Street. Y'all know what I'm talking about? When they burned down our cities, whole cities. And this wasn't just going on. We know Greenwood. We know Black Wall Street. We know Rosewood. It was going on all across America in the early 1900s. That's when they started putting those Civil War statues up, when they was burning our cities down because we were having hospitals and we were having schools. We were on our way up. Because you can't keep God's people down. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Man, man, I wonder if Maya Angelou knew something when she wrote Still I Rise. I wonder if she knew something, baby. You see what I'm saying? Because you can't stop it. And so they were doing all that. And when they, when they stopped burning our cities and our communities, they started dividing it by running highways through it. We fighting with that in Lafayette now. They want to put a highway through everything that's successful. All right? Things start popping. Businesses start popping up. Uh, the Department of Transportation come through. You know, we think a highway would run straight through here would be great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be like, man, we finally got commerce here. We finally working together here. We finally shopping in each other's stores here. Yes, but a highway would be best for everybody. All right? In Atlanta, y'all, uh, there was a thriving black community. Uh, uh, guess what the city did? They filled it with water, made a lake out of it. All right? Uh, uh, lake Lanier. All right? Uh, not only that, uh, 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 there was a great black community in New York. Thriving hospitals, schools. <laughs> It was called uh, Seneca Village. Y'all look that up. Seneca Village when you get time. Guess what they did to that? Somebody know their history. <laughs> they kicked all the brothers and sisters out of that, made a park out of it. Anybody know what that park name is? Central Park. One of the most popular parks in America now. But because we don't know the history of it, it was built upon our community. Disenfranchised, disinvested, never paid for. And I'm going to tell you, if God was looking down at that, would God say, that's cruel? Y'all showed no mercy. And when they couldn't take our communities no more because too many eyes was looking, they began to put crack in our communities, guns in our communities, trap music in our communities. <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? And when they put the violence in the, and gave us a mob mentality, they gave us, they gave us the mafia mentality. All that stuff that we're doing, now, now we aggressive anyway, we Hebrews. But you give us a mafia mentality, then we're going to take it to a notch that y'all can't even take it to. Because we hood like that. We just, you understand what I'm saying? And then you send the cops in there. And they're stopping us for tail lights that's not even broken. <laughs> Searching us <laughs> with illegal searches. And then when you ask, beating us up. And then when they film you, still get off. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Huh? 
And then when you finally get them to court, they pick a 12-member jury, all white. Anybody know how they just did that with Tatiana? Are y'all watching the news? Would God say that that's justice? That's no mercy. That's cruel. He's looking down and he's saying, listen, you tap on that. Listen, I can go on for days. The abortions in our neighborhoods. You, you tap on that uh, not access to adequate health care. You tap on that food deserts. You can't buy a fruit in the hood. Got to drive 15 miles to the nearest place to get an apple. Amen. huh? Amen. But I can get a fruit roll up. I can, get a, I can get a large Dr. Pepper. I can get a big gulp. Huh? And some people say, no, we don't have a food desert in our neighborhood because you can get some food, but it's all just sodium, sugar, and cholesterol. And you call that justice? It's no mercy. And now, listen, I, I just want to be petty for a second. You know, I know we didn't come up from way high in the spirit in the prophetic. Come on with me. Let's be petty. Be petty with pastor. <laughs> Please, I got some stuff to get off my chest. You ever notice how it's only the black cities that's having problems with water? Why all our water got laid in it? Why all our water got, got what they call forever chemicals in it? You know, what's going on there? Now, the suburbs right outside those cities got pristine water conditions. They bottling water from those neighborhoods and selling it in the stove. But our water making our children too tall or too short, grow an extra ear on their back. What in the world going on? <laughs> What's happening is, is disinvestment. They're taking the money out the cities when we get in them and letting the infrastructure fall. And that's not justice. And that's not right. And our city taxes, most of the time in those cities, paying for new infrastructure in the suburbs, yeah. but keeping the old, antiquated 70s, 80s infrastructure in the cities. Yeah. It's highway robbery. Pastor, what should happen? I'm glad you asked. I was here for it. <laughs> Just like they got different cabinet members in America, Department of Energy, huh? Department of Education, Secretary, we need, we need a Department of Water and pure water, water quality. We need that. Pass it. Well, we got, we, got, we got the EPA. They bought and sold by the companies. Don't worry about them. We need a specific secretary to be worried about the water systems in the inner city. Somebody we can call to question. Somebody we can, we can say, listen, the water in Detroit is bad. The water in Flint, Michigan is bad. The water in Jackson, Mississippi is bad. And it's your job to make sure that not only white Americans get good water, but black Americans too. My God, my God, my God. All right. Woo! Thank y'all for allowing me just to debrief y'all in pettiness for a second. All right? I got a few more minutes, but as we look at modern, present-day Babylon, we see injustice. We see no mercy. We see cruelty from the moment we got off the boat, y'all, until 2022 today. It's still happening. But I got good news for you. Justice is on the way. I want to do that, that dance they do. You know that dance they do when they score a touchdown? Somebody's going to have to show me how to do that. My God, my God. I can do it when I'm at home by myself, but with all y'all watching, I can't. All right, listen, listen. You know what I'm saying? Man, you know, you know I'm telling you, man, they, they, they hiding, they holding on as long as they can. But they know that the word done been issued out in heaven, that Babylon, wherever she is, America, Europe, wherever she is, that Babylon is falling. The Ashkenazi system of government of the world is about done with. The new world order is coming. And it's not the new world order that President Bush thought was coming. It's the new world order that Yahweh is bringing. Come on, give y'all some praise. Woo! My God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Babylon is falling. And so listen, before we go, I never like to waste an opportunity as we get into the word of God 
to make sure you know before you leave huh? that you can be Hebrew.